Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, an epic 54,000 piece jigsaw puzzle from Graphica. If you haven't seen the other videos I've released in the series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you watch at least the unboxing video just to get an overview of the entire jigsaw puzzle in itself. Now, I'm chuckling because I'd rather laugh than be crying because this is probably the 10th time I've tried to record this intro. Everything from forgetting to turn on the camera to having a delivery arrive and Thora having a barking mess in the background. And you know what? I'm loving it because this is bag 24, which means we're nearing the end of our journey. So anything that can prolong it is fine by me. It's section 16. Look at that. Four lovely paintings, but this is going to be a challenge. They're all very painterly, like brush strokes, not defined lines, lots of blues. I think there's a lot of beige pieces. I'm estimating right now this is going to take me at least 18 hours. Now, the beige background pieces up here and there may be hard to see on camera. They do have some detail and design in them, but sometimes it's very faint. And I, sometimes I can make it out, but then if your eyes just get tired of looking at beige and more beige, it all blends in together. At least the frames are all quite distinct, so that may help when it comes to sorting and building. If we pull out our panoramic poster of the entirety of the jigsaw puzzle, look at that. Oh my goodness, we are now all the way over here doing this middle section of this last column we have to complete. And then we'll just have these top three paintings to do because we've already done the bookshelf. So just a reminder, I'll do this top one to finish this column. Then we're gonna jump over here and do this one because it has a lot of beige. And then we will finish off with this section right here, one large lovely painting. And in fact, I'm gonna do the beige pieces first. And I may like try to randomly pick out a piece that I can tell is actual painting and set it aside. And that'll be the last piece that I put in. My goodness, I can't believe we're nearing, we're nearing finale here. Oh, and I'm, I'm loving it. I really, really am. This has been such a joy. I hope you've enjoyed all the voiceovers. As with the other videos, during the time lapse, I'll talk about the four paintings and the artists. Now, this is a Pose Cezanne, and I can't remember if we've had a painting from Cezanne before in the jigsaw puzzle. I'm assuming we have. This is another Monet, and then two Van Goghs, which we're very familiar with those artists by now, but I will talk about the paintings, and we'll learn a little bit of art history all together. So, without further ado and for the love of puzzles, let's get to building bag 24, which is section 16, as we travel around art. There are four paintings in this section of the puzzle. The first one is from Paul Cezanne, and we saw the card players from him in a previous section of the jigsaw. There can be some confusion around the name of this painting though, and when exactly it was done, because Cézanne painted several views of Lestac. Lestac is a village in southern France, just west of Marseille. From what I can find online, the one featured in this jigsaw puzzle is called Lestac View Through the Trees. In French it was probably Lestac Vue à travers les arbres. It's an Impressionist style painted in 1879. It's approximately 45 by 53 centimeters in dimension and is privately owned. Many artists of the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist periods visited or resided in Lestac or in the surrounding area. They painted village scenes, the road leading to the village, and the view of the bay from the village. Paul Cézanne painted many views of the water from his room in Lestac, showing the changing seasons, the shifting light of day, and the changes in the village itself over time. The second painting in this section of the puzzle is another from Claude Monet and is titled Three Fishing Boats. In French, it probably would have been Trois Bateaux de Pêche. It's from 1886. It's quite a good size at 73 by 92 and a half centimeters in dimension. It is currently at the Museum of Fine Arts Budapest, Hungary. One of his best works was The Three Fishing Boats. 
His painting technique was probably inspired by the time he spent on the Normandy coast. One of his favorite spots there was Etretat, a fishing village located close to Le Havre. And he often spent time there at various periods of his life. He fell in love with the spectacular landscape of the area. The painting depicts the Pult of Le Havre on an overcast morning with three boats on their way out to the sea. It showcases what actually happens every morning in Etretat and many other fishing villages around the world. Monet's method of painting was meant to capture the play of light on water. He painted rapidly with short, comma-like brushstrokes. In addition, he juxtaposed contrasting and unmixed colors, which brought life to the water. This method allowed him to portray the effects of light and atmosphere. At first, this painting received a lot of criticism. Other artists condemned it for its broad brushwork and flattened pitcher plane. Unperturbed by this, Monet continued to work on his unique technique. With time, his style was accepted and three fishing boats grew to become one of the world's most popular pieces of art. The third painting in this section of the puzzle is another by Vincent van Gogh and is titled Café Terrasse at Night also known as the Café Terrasse on the Place du Forum. And when it was first exhibited in 1891, it was actually entitled Coffee House in the Evening, Café le Soir. It was painted in 1888 and it is approximately 81 by 65 centimeters in dimension. He painted this in Al France and interestingly, it's not signed but it is described and mentioned by him in three different letters. After finishing Café Terrasse at night, he wrote a letter to his sister. Here's an excerpt. Now there's a painting of night without black, with nothing but beautiful blue, violet, and green. And in these surroundings, the lighted square is colored pale sulfur, lemon green. I enormously enjoy painting on the spot at night. In the past, they used to draw and paint the picture from the drawing in the daytime. But I find that it suits me to paint the thing straight away. It's quite true that I may take a blue for a green in the dark, a blue lilac for a pink lilac, since you can't make out the nature of the tone clearly. But it's the only way of getting away from the conventional black night with a poor pallid and whitish light, while in fact, a mere candle by itself gives us the richest yellows and oranges. Visitors to the site can stand at the northeastern corner of the Place du Forum where the artist had set up his easel. The site was refurbished in 1990-1991 to replicate his painting which is currently at the Krollo Müller Museum in Otello, Netherlands. The last painting in this puzzle is titled The Starry Night and is again by Vincent van Gogh. We recently saw in this jigsaw puzzle Starry Night over the Rhone. This one, though, was painted in June 1889, and it depicts the view from the east-facing window of his asylum room at Saint-Rémy-de-Provence, just before sunrise, with the addition of an imaginary village. It's approximately 74 by 92 centimeters in dimension and is currently at the Museum of Modern Art in New York of the United States. In the aftermath of his breakdown, Van Gogh voluntarily admitted himself to the St. Paul de Mossol Asylum on the 8th of May, 1889. Housed in a former monastery, this asylum catered to the wealthy and was less than half full when he arrived, allowing him to occupy not only a second-story bedroom, but also a ground-floor room for use as a painting studio. Although he painted during the day in the ground-floor studio, the view has been identified as the one from his bedroom window facing east, a view which he painted variations of no fewer than 21 times. The starry night is the only nocturne in the series of views from his bedroom window. In a letter to painter Emile Bernard from late November 1889, Van Gogh referred to the painting as a failure. He argued with Bernard and especially Paul Gauguin as to whether one should paint from nature, as he preferred, or paint from what Gauguin called abstractions, 
paintings conceived in the imagination. In the letter to Belnau, Van Gogh recounted his experiences with Gauguin when he lived with him in 1888. When Gauguin was in Arles, I once or twice allowed myself to be led astray into abstraction, as you know. But that was delusion, dear friend, and one soon comes up against a brick wall. And yet, once again I allowed myself to be led astray, reaching for stars that are too big, another failure, and I have had my fill of that. Van Gogh here is referring to the expressionistic swirls which dominate the upper center portion of the starry night. I just realized that this is the last middle section. Because I had done all those bookshelf sections, I've now completed all the along the floor sections and all the middle sections. And it was a lot easier than I first expected. I thought I estimated like it would take 18 hours plus, but it was just shy of 12 hours. What was it, 11 hours, 50 minutes, I believe? And to tell you the truth, the paintings were quite easy to sort and differentiate between the four of them. The beige piece is the middle. Again, you can't really make it out on camera, but there is detailing in the middle part. So that was a bit easier to do. The rest of the beige pieces, I just did my thing and got through them. The Starry Night took a bit longer, but actually wasn't too bad. I don't think I'd want to do like a thousand piece of it, but there was enough differentiation in the lines and the colors. It was such a joy. All the frames were fun to do. It, it was really, really nice. So this is the last middle section. And unintentionally, I'm left now with three top sections. So I'll finish column after column after column and only three bags left and then, and then we're done. So I have a little bit of news to share. I have two projects planned, one a smaller project, one a bigger project. The smaller project will be coming along soonish enough and uh, I hope you all enjoy it. The bigger project will most likely be in the new year started after I do the speed puzzling in February and I'll give you more details on those but these are projects where it's like kind of a bigger puzzle or whatnot that will be over a few videos. And in fact, if you pay attention to my community tab, often I put a lot of polls, I make a little comments, there's lots of Easter eggs and information there. And the reason why I put the polls is because I ask you, my viewers, what you would like or what you think, your opinions, and I take that into account. So these two projects have been mentioned in community posts and so some of you will be surprised, but others of you will be like, oh yeah, I remember when we talked about that, okay. So those are to come. So I do have some projects planned and I also have some really exciting news. So remember I told you I was pretty much sorted that I was gonna just lay this out on the floor to display, but I had one more person I wanted to go speak with. They're a joiner. They run a joinery. So not a term I was familiar with. So carpentry is like, I believe the overarching um, woodworking term. Joinery is more specific to like building cabinetry, staircases, wine cellars and whatnot. More specific wood items. Apologies if I have that wrong. So my framer sent me to talk to a joiner. I hope I'm saying this correctly. Long story short, they have a big warehouse and they have a showroom, which is a long, narrow, but not too narrow room that they're not using because they're so busy and they have so much work, they actually haven't done up the showroom. They want to like put in like a fake kitchen with cabinetry and show off their options and whatnot for wood. So this big room is just sitting there. Well, after chatting and talking, and they're such lovely people, they're gonna allow me to use the space. I won't get into too much detail yet because nothing is completely finalized. Here in New Zealand, a lot of businesses shut down for weeks over the Christmas holidays because it's also our summer. So they will soon be wrapping up work for the year and then coming back mid-January. So I believe we will reconvene at the end of January to plan. 
but it looks like I'll be able to use the site end February. And I'll probably be able to display the puzzle for like a month. So I won't have to rush and, and get everything sorted for a two day display. And I'm so excited for that. And members of the public can come. They're open, you know, every day of the week. And we're, we'll talk to the local radio station. I have connections there and maybe the local paper to see if they want to come in. And there's enough room that I'll be able to put like maybe one of the murder mystery jigsaw puzzles out that people can solve or the Vizzles riddle one where you have to solve all the book titles, display some of my solid color crypt or the color gradients, have a puzzle out that people can just assemble and I'll be able to come and go for a few hours here or there and be there to talk with people, whoever pops in. They said I'd be able to film episodes there in front of the big lovely puzzle. I'll take photos, I'll take video of the whole setup. It's going to be great. So I have a new location to display the puzzle that is gonna go directly up on the wall in all its glory. I can't believe it, I'm so excited. So let's hope, let's hope everything goes to plan. You know, I, I don't like saying too much before things become a reality, but I think this is the solution. And the idea is I'll be able to get into this space around end of February. And the only reason for that is because I have the speed puzzling at the beginning of February. Hubby's away at um, a university camp for a week and I want him around to help me. So we're pushing it probably end February. But I'm so excited, how wonderful. And I joked about how they'd be like, Hey, where's Joe? I think he's puzzling with Don Luis. Well, we need him to work. Where's Susan? Oh yeah, she's trying to speed puzzle, beat Don Luis's time. <laughs> Joking about how none of the employees will be working. They'll all be out puzzling with me. I just can't wait. We hope also to maybe have school groups be able to come by and see the different puzzles. Oh, I can't wait. I'm, I'm really excited. That was the best news ever because the cost of building some sort of display, which I would have only used temporarily, was going to be, you know, maybe $800, $1,000 New Zealand. But this solution allowed me to use a space that they don't use, showcase the puzzle, have people coming and going, which is good for them. Although they're quite busy, so it's a, they said it's not like they need the business, they're doing really well, which is wonderful. So nice, so friendly, I can't wait. I'll do a series of videos. So that's all in the works and you'll have more details on that. The plan is that this will be finished before the end of the year and all the videos will be up. Then in January, I'll probably release like a summary video, maybe a full time-lapse video. And then finally at the end of February-ish, when everything's up on the wall, I'll do some more videos to showcase it in all its glory. And I can't wait. I am so appreciative of all the local support I've gotten from friends, family, especially my hubby. And now with them helping me out to display the puzzle, it, it means so much to me. It really, really does. And it means so much to me that you're watching these videos. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy them. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!